When people started burning coal and got used to inexpensive energy, we also weren't as aware of all of the impacts that coal has. Acid rain, entire forests were completely destroyed and lakes so acidified that there's no fish in them. Smog in cities and ozone pollution. You cannot find a way to make electricity with more greenhouse gas emissions than by burning coal in a conventional coal power plant. Thirty-five on the mic, 92.1. Carl Volbin, spokesperson for People for Hope. That's the Harmony Township opposing pollution of the environment. Our battle just began here about a month and a half ago, and it involves their power plant and their, um, their desire to build a cool fly ash dump site and take up 600 acres of farmland here in the Township of Harmony. You said your farm has been chosen as a landfill site. Well, I said, how many acres are we talking? And he said, your whole farm. And I said, what? I said, you've got to be kidding. Craig says, well, we live here. What are we going to do? He says, just relocate you. No big deal. Just relocate you. The two that came here said they would be back a week later. And if they didn't sign the soil agreement, then they would go get a court order and start the condemnation process, you know, to get the necessary approval to go on their land. And that's when I interjected and said, well, you have a fight in your hands because I said, you can offer me $10 million and it's not for sale. I said, this is my grandfather's farm and 10 years down the road, it's going to be a century farm. My son's planning to take this farm over for another generation. Well, maybe it's a little less than that, but probably 70% of the electricity in the state is produced by coal burning power plants. And we can't overnight turn that around. The reason they're doing something now about the sulfur emissions is that they have to meet certain requirements of the Clean Air Act. And these requirements were delayed for many, many years, as you can imagine, by industry to try to put off as long as possible dealing with it. The whole argument here is that we've been spraying mercury onto our lakes and rivers out of the smokestack and we've been spraying sulfur out creating acid rain. We've come up with these laws now to clean the air and then dumping it into the ground. We're trading pollution. Right. How do you make sure that by cleaning up one problem you're not creating a new problem? They're going to be creating eight times the amount of waste that they were creating prior to the scrubber going in. Now we're going to capture the mercury, capture the, the sulfur, mix it in with the lime, truck it out here and dump it into the ground. But they called this a site. Well, I said, this is not our site. This is our home. This is where we live. It's not a site and it's not a landfill. It's our home. In Wisconsin right now, we have about a dozen coal power plants that are greater than 300 megawatts that form this fleet of what we call baseload power plants. They're on almost all the time producing electricity. Coal is cheapest. And it's cheapest because we can dig it up out of the ground, and when we need more electricity, we just dig up more and burn more. Wisconsin has no coal. This is all part of the 16 to 20 billion dollars our state sends out of state every year. And so it's cheap only in the sense of ignoring the environmental impacts, the mercury contamination, the sulfur contamination, the nitrogen contamination, and now, most importantly, the greenhouse gas contamination. Coal is cheapest for power plant companies, but it's not cheapest for society.
the idea that Dairy One Power is investing an enormous amount of money, hundreds of millions of dollars, into a decades-old coal plant with the idea of extending its lifespan another 20, 30 years doesn't seem reasonable in light of what we're seeing happening to the climate. And what we would like to encourage Dairy One Power to do is take an approach that's going to be better for their future and actually be better for their members because they're not going to have this enormous liability of a big coal plant. Instead, come up with a whole suite of options that'll help it to meet its obligations to its customers, but also to help insulate its own owners and members from the fact that greenhouse gas emission regulation is coming. Perhaps the time has come where that power plant is no longer the best choice for the future for their area. Well, you can make new cars, new trucks, new furniture, but once land is gone as a landfill, it's gone forever. I sincerely hope that in 30 years, we're no longer burning coal. But if we are still burning any fossil fuels, it should not be done in a pulverized coal plant.